Now, please join me in welcoming J Street's president and founder and my good friend, Jeremy Benamy. Thank you so much, and welcome to Washington, D.C. It has been a long time coming uh, since we were planning to do this conference in the spring of 2021, and then we were planning to do this conference in the spring of 2022, and here we finally are. So it is great to see everybody here in Washington, D.C. Thank, thank you as well to Alan Solomon, who has been a tremendous chair of the board of J Street, and thank you to the entire board and leadership of J Street for all that you do. Alan stole my thunder because I was going to ask the staff to stand up and for you all to applaud, but one more time because I am so grateful to the J Street staff. Thank you. Fifteen years ago, a group of Americans who cared very deeply about the state of Israel and who shared a real concern about how Israel advocacy was carried out in American politics got together and started J Street. Many of us were children and grandchildren of people who had helped to start the state of Israel and had fought for its survival. We were also the children and grandchildren of people who had survived and in some cases not the horrors of the Holocaust or the persecution of Jews over the centuries globally. Our definition of pro-Israel advocacy included a commitment to Israel's security, to its democratic values, and to its Jewish character. And it also encompassed support for the rights of Palestinians. We recognize that Israel could only remain secure and democratic and Jewish in nature if there would be a Palestinian state alongside Israel and if the Palestinians in Israel had equal rights. So in our earliest days, we became very associated with one simple phrase, the two-state solution. And in 20, 2008, we were very fortunate. There was an Israeli prime minister who supported two states. The Prime Minister Ehud Olmert was actively negotiating with a Palestinian Prime Minister and their negotiations were being facilitated by an American Secretary of State named Condoleezza Rice. And they had the support of an American President, a Republican named George W. Bush. In fact, four of the most recent five Prime Ministers at that point in time had supported territorial compromise because they understood that Israel's future depended on it. Yet sadly, here we are today. It's 15 years later, and we are further from two states today than we were when we launched. And this coming week, or perhaps in the next couple of weeks, Israel's going to seat the most right-wing government in its history, whose policies are likely to cement to seek to cement permanent and undemocratic control of millions of Palestinians. They will challenge Israel's very democracy to its core, and they will seek to erode the rights of many who live there, from non-Orthodox Jews to the LGBTQ plus community to human rights and progressive activists and more. So many who share J Street's core values, many of us who believed deeply in Israel, what it aimed to be, and the principles on which it was founded, many are throwing up their hands in despair. They are ready to walk away. So let's be honest. Our work today in the 2020s is fundamentally different than the work in 2008 when J Street launched. And given the prospects for two states and for diplomacy to end the conflict are slim in the near term, we need to be really clear about what this movement, what this organization can do, 
What are the questions that we can address? What is the meaningful difference that we can make? And my friends, the questions are questions about America. They're questions about American policy. They're questions about American politics and about the community in which Jewish Americans live. Because J Street is an American organization. Our work is here in this country. And the first question we have to ask as Americans, as an American lobby, is what should American policy be in light of this emerging one state reality? Now the loudest voices in the Jewish community and those on the political right will continue to insist that the US should just support Israel, right or wrong, no matter what it does. These voices, led by APAC and by other legacy organizations, says the US should continue to provide billions of dollars without restrictions or oversight and should protect Israel from any accountability in international institutions for its behavior. They're ready to label critics of Israeli policy as anti-Israel or anti-Semitic simply to shut down and stifle debate and dissent. Well, J Street views things differently. We believe that the United States must unequivocally oppose any effort by Israel to deepen its control over occupied territory and the Palestinians who live there. Let me be clear, Israel does not question Israel's right to or need for security. That is not the issue, but expanding settlements and demolishing Palestinian homes and imposing collective punishment and treating two neighbors under two sets of law simply based on their ethnicity, those things don't enhance Israel's security, they undermine Israel's security. And, and let me tell you, that is not just a liberal American Jew speaking. That is the view of the overwhelming bulk of the retired commanders of Israel's security forces. Just this week, the former head of the IDF, Gadi Eisenkot, said if the new government harms Israel's democracy, its education, or the IDF, a million people should take to the streets, and he committed to be at the front of the line. He is right, and the U.S. too has to oppose such moves. It must oppose annexation, de facto or de jure. It must oppose Israeli moves to legalize the settlements its own laws have said are illegal. It must oppose and stand against any move to change the status quo on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif. And you know what? We have to make sure that our tax dollars, our American tax dollars, are not being used to abet settlement construction, home demolitions, or other occupation <laughs> deepening activities. It's, it's really not that hard. The United States has laws, and it restricts how aid to the Palestinians and other countries are used. And those laws are routinely enforced. In fact, we're enforcing and looking into how our aid to Ukraine is being used as it defends itself from invasion. So maybe it's time for some serious oversight and accountability for how our aid to Israel is actually being used. So even without an immediate path towards two states or towards conflict resolution right in front of us, U.S. policy can still make a very concrete difference in people's lives. It can protect rights, it can prevent abuses, and it can keep a path open so that one day we can, in fact, resolve this conflict. Our voice matters in shaping that policy. The second question for J Street in the 2020s is who represents us in American politics? Now, the most powerful institutions in our community for 
decades have embraced the idea that Jewish Americans should support any politician who supports Israel, right or wrong. They say nothing else matters. It turns out they'll even endorse candidates who are ready to undermine our own free and fair elections. <laughs> so rather than focusing on defeating the white nationalists and the election deniers with whom most of Jewish America has nothing in common, they instead are spending tens of millions of dollars to defeat liberal and progressive candidates who may or may not have once in their lives uttered a critical word about Israeli policy. Organizations that fail to call out the Ben Gavirs and the Smotriches in Israel while endorsing the Jim Jordans, the Andy Biggs, and the Scott Perrys here in the US do not speak for us. They do not represent us. This is not the political voice of the American Jewish community. So on this second question, who gets to speak for the American Jewish community in national politics, our role, J Street's role in the 2020 is to represent you, represent the majority of our community, and say loudly and clearly, our political support will not go to those who do not stand up for justice, who do not stand up for diplomacy, who do not stand up for democracy here in Israel and globally. The third question for J Street in the 2020s relates to our own Jewish community, how it functions and what its future will be. <clears throat> in the coming years, Israel's government, duly elected by its people, seems likely to take more actions that run counter to the values that American Jews teach our children are the essence of Jewish identity. The American Jewish community prides itself on its role in the fight for justice over the decades. The sight of Rabbi Heschel marching with Dr. Martin Luther King. The Jewish leaders who helped build the labor movement, the women's movement, the LGBTQ plus movement, and more. It is ingrained in us that the Jewish people should not treat others the way we did not want to be treated ourselves when we lived in the lands of others. <laughs> At our seders, we celebrate our own people's liberation from slavery, but most important, we recommit as well to the struggles of others for freedom yet to be won across the globe. So how can we explain to our children and our grandchildren let alone to ourselves, that these values and these principles are the core of Jewish identity if the state of the Jewish people is denying another people their rights and the inequality and undercutting the rule of international law. This is a fundamental crisis that looms over American Jewry in the coming years. Those in the establishment of our community who insist that Jewish America must stand united and unquestioningly loyal to Israel no matter what it is doing, they are doing a deep, deep disservice to the long-term health of the Jewish community. And so on this third question regarding the relationship of Jewish America to an Israel that is mired in permanent occupation and increasingly undemocratic, J Street will be a home for those who believe that our community, for its own sake, even more than for Israel's sake, must root its identity in a commitment not to a flag or a piece of land, but to a set of principles and values. My friends, if we don't do this, we will see large swaths of our community walk away. Not only will they walk away from engagement with Israel, that's already happening, but they'll walk away from the Jewish 
community itself. Now, let me be frank. <laughs> Even just walking in the hallway coming in here, every conversation I have with a J Street supporter these days revolves around one similar theme. If the two-state solution isn't on the agenda for the foreseeable future, what the heck is there for J Street to do? How many of you have asked me that question? I mean, I, let's see, show I, directly. I've spoken to at least half of you, I'm sure. My answer is that our work increases in importance the further Israel drifts away from two states. If we had leadership in Israel that wanted to negotiate an end to the conflict, if we had a Palestinian leadership that was actually capable and had the political credibility to lead its people towards compromise, and if we had an American leadership that really wanted to do this, this would all be a lot easier. Maybe if everything were going right, we wouldn't need J Street. But precisely because we are mired in permanent occupation and the undemocratic and unjust one-state reality is upon us, the work of J Street is more important than ever. So to sum up, to sum up, here's what we're going to do. We've got three items on our to-do list. One, we need to push for American policy that is unwavering in opposition to occupation, to settlement expansion, and to Israeli policies that undermine our values and interests. <laughs> Two, we have to ensure that in American politics, the Jewish majority is heard that candidates and elected officials understand that for most of our community, our support for Israel, our engagement with Israel, is bound up with our values. And support for Israel is, cannot be an excuse on the part of politicians for undercutting democracy and justice here at home. And third, we have to press our community's leadership to demonstrate that the values that we preach apply not just to everyone else, but to the state that is the national homeland of our people. There is so much work to do. The stakes have never been higher. And the only winners, if we give in to despair, are the ethno-nationalists, the racists, and the demagogues who threaten not only Israel, but our own democracy here at home. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, those hundreds and hundreds of people watching at home, the thousands who are here. Thank you for all you are doing to build J Street in the 2020s and for being part of our newly renamed pro-Israel, pro-peace, pro-democracy movement. Now, let's end our conference going with some welcomes from leaders around the country and from some newly elected members of Congress. We'll have a series of videos, and after those videos, we will bring to the stage J Street U's national board, led by its president, Cora Galpern, from the University of Michigan. Thank you again for being here. I look forward to the next couple of days. Thank you.